Let's go meet up with the group! Paimon's really looking forward to today's story! Looks like everyone's here. Now, before we begin, why don't we finish where we left off yesterday? There was an important decision to be made, yes? I'll pour everyone a cup of tea. Uh, is that really the most important part, though, Clarion? Paimon's more concerned about our current surroundings. Have you all cold railings? Dim lights? This is obviously supposed to be a prison! I admire the work put into the set. Still, it's obvious the scriptwriter has never paid a visit to the fortress of Maripede. So this set is going to be a part of the script? Unfortunately, that is something I can neither confirm nor deny. Um, anyone think Cloran's smile is starting to look kinda... scary? Well, whatever happens, we'll just have to push on. But first, we should really figure out what to do with this treasure. If we're worried about arousing suspicion because of our identity, why don't we give ourselves a different name, just like Cloran's master did? Yeah, it might be better to keep a low profile. As long as we're helping people, it doesn't matter who we are or what we're called. Um... Staring at me won't get you anywhere. Or did you want some more tea? Oh, um, Paimon's good. Thanks. Why aren't you saying anything, Navia? Wait, what's that next to you? Oh, this is the short sword Cloran mentioned last night. I found it. Huh. I'm surprised you managed to track it down after all this time. Well, I made sure to take good care of it, considering the circumstances in which you gave it to me. Of course I had to keep it safe. Anyway, where were we? Oh, right. I was just thinking about all the potential ways for us to break out of prison. We could dig a tunnel, or try to bribe the guards. Wait, we haven't been thrown into prison yet, have we? Well, it's only a matter of time. It pays to be prepared. Just like how you should always have an umbrella on hand, even when it's sunny. Alright, Paimon's made up her mind. Let's just give the treasure away. Paimon may have wanted to keep it, but if it's going to land us in prison somehow, Paimon will be too upset to enjoy her snacks! So, you reached an agreement? Alright then, we can continue with the story. Oh, and we'll collect all the scattered pieces of treasure on the ground as well. Alright. You collect the treasure and make your way back to the capital with your bag of loot in hand. The city is still shrouded in a gloomy, oppressive atmosphere, but your spirits are surprisingly high. In places where sunlight struggles to reach, you generously share your wealth with the children, the elderly, and the poor in urgent need of help. Thank you, kind soul. The elderly woman's look of gratitude follows you as you walk away, her eyes never leaving your back until you move entirely out of sight. However, there's still quite a bit of Mora remaining. It appears you haven't made much progress. <sighs> She's probably trying to tell us to speed this up. We need to hurry up so we can address the sorcerer problem. 
Should we go find that man again at the square? He seemed like a pretty responsible guy. I'm sure he knows the people here far better than us. Oh, good idea! Just as you start to make way to the square, intent on finding the man again, there's a voice. Please wait, distinguished guests. Several strange guards suddenly call out to you. They run forward to meet you and proceed to politely pay their respects. Greetings, gentlemen. Are we being invited for afternoon tea? Surely you jest, my lady. That would not be our place. It is His Excellency the King who requests to meet with you. Please come with us. Hmm, do you think this could be a trap? Well, we have to investigate the court at some point, right? Meeting the king himself would be a fantastic opportunity to do that. I say we go for it. If something happens, we'll just turn the whole place upside down. Uh, that sounds a little intense. After a quick discussion, you nod to the guards and agree to follow. They lead you all the way to the audience hall of the palace. Gilded tables line both sides of the hall. The space itself is adorned with all manner of expensive antiques, glass shelves, and silver candlesticks. The items appear quite ordinary in size and dimension, yet their presence somehow makes the emptiness of the hall feel even more surreal and ominous. Wow! Oh, it's so luxurious! The elderly king, clad in a magnificent robe, sits upon the deep crimson throne before you. He wears above his head a majestic crown, with a gemstone the size of a bird's egg set right at the very front. As you observe it, you see a complex pattern of light reflect off its surface. Ahem! <clears throat> They're here, your majesty! A man dressed in dark clothes, likely a minister, shields his mouth with his hands and bends down to whisper a few words to the king. After a moment, he lowers his hands and stands back up. His gaze shifts to fixate on your group, but he does not move from his place at the king's side. The king does not appear entirely aware of his surroundings. The man by his side, though... We should keep a close eye on him. The king remains still and says nothing. The minister is the one who speaks. Esteemed guests, allow me to thank you for coming to our faraway kingdom. Unfortunately, his majesty the king finds himself quite exhausted from work. So please allow me, his prime minister, to welcome you in his stead. I've heard tell that your group, the Marachose Hunters, used your exceptional ability with the sword to repel the monsters near the capital. Such a great deed deserves to be rewarded. However, seeing that I was not fortunate enough to observe such a feat with my own eyes, you'll forgive me for seeking to verify the truth by speaking to you myself. Well, we've got nothing to hide. You brought us here to talk, right? So we'll just explain what happened. The golem's blades were so powerful, they could cut down trees in a single swipe. It took a lot of effort to defeat them, even for trained swordsmen like us. Well, that was enough details, right? Believe us now? Hmm. Your account does indeed match those of the survivors. Since you were the ones who defeated the monsters, that must mean you are also in possession of the treasure they stole? Well, we did take the treasure, but... How did he know about the treasure? Ah, then I must ask that you return it at once. It belongs to the kingdom. Wait, but 
didn't you just say that our great deed deserved a reward? Shouldn't the treasure be considered a part of that? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, that was indeed what I said. But you seem to have forgotten a very important distinction. Only that which is freely given by the king can be considered a reward. Taking the rightful wealth of a kingdom without said permission, on the other hand, is a crime. But that's completely unreasonable! Yeah, that makes no sense! If it weren't for us, the treasure would still be buried underground somewhere! Maybe so, yet the fact remains. You tried to dispose of the treasure without reporting it to the court and without receiving permission, yes? Um... What? No answer? Surely you're not insinuating that you, a group of legendary Mara Shosei hunters, sought to take the treasure for yourselves? I... well... what about the king? Is he just gonna let this guy talk for him the whole time? Clad in his magnificent robe, the king remains seated, with his hands resting on either side of the throne. His posture is rigid and unmoving. He stares forward with an empty look in his eyes, completely unmoved by the events before him. <sighs> From the look of things, could the Prime Minister be the evil sorcerer? Or could both the King and the Prime Minister have fallen under the evil sorcerer's control? I would like to observe the number of guards stationed in the hall. The guards in the palace appear fully armed, their expressions solemn. Sensing the tense atmosphere in the room, they stand at the ready, each with a hand placed upon the hilt of their sword, as if prepared to draw their weapons and surround you at a moment's notice. Well, there goes my plan to turn the whole place upside down, I guess. It appears we've been visited by nothing more than a group of ill-intentioned imposters. What a pity. Guards, take them away and throw them in the dungeons. Before I decide your fate, however, I must first determine whether you have any accomplices outside the court. Can't we try to slip away? Or maybe start some kind of riot? But if we try to fight the guards right now... Don't worry. At least we figured out who's behind all this. Let's just play it by ear. If you're scared, Paimon... Just hold my hand. Aw, thanks, you guys. You allow yourself to be led away by guards surrounding you on both sides. It's only when you begin to feel drops of water falling from the dungeon ceiling and smell the stench of death and decay all around you that you finally realize you've stepped into a completely different world. Stay here. And don't try anything funny. The guards lock the cell door and leave without looking back. Wait, sir! Your voice echoes through the dark hall, but the only response you receive is the sound of water dripping from the ceiling. No! What should we do now? Carve out a new path of fate with our own two hands, of course. I draw my weapon. You reach toward your waist, but find nothing there. You now recall that your weapons were confiscated before the guards locked you in the cell. The bag of treasure along with them. Uh, what about that knife I hid in my boot? When did you hide it in there? When I was thinking about digging a tunnel. Rejected. You failed to inform the GM of this course of action. Moreover, the guards would have conducted a thorough search before throwing you in prison. And the keys to the cell aren't anywhere to be seen? Correct. You don't even feel a lock hole on the cell door. Oh, well, there goes all our plans. Indeed. Huh? Why are you the one saying indeed? Because that statement holds true for me as well. This is where the script ends. Hmm. Generally speaking, this should be the point where the scriptwriter gives the players some kind of hint, or gives the GM some kind of code for how to move forward. Uh, 
I mean, maybe they just really wanted us to be immersed in the feeling of being in prison? Like, they'll only show us the way out once we've grown truly and utterly desperate? That is a possibility. <sighs> if only there were desserts and tea in real prison. Oh, wait, guess that's kind of how the Fortress of Meripede works if you're lucky. Oh, before I forget, Navia, the short sword you had with you earlier, I took a closer look, and the craftsmanship doesn't appear to resemble anything from this era. If I remember correctly, that style was last in vogue several hundred years ago. Wait, Cloran said that sword used to belong to her master, right? Does that mean her master has been alive that long? I doubt it. The way she went about things often made her seem childish more than anything. I'd say the sword was most likely an heirloom passed down over time. Uh, hang on. A precious heirloom passed down to you by your master. And you gave it to me just like that? You weren't worried I might lose it? Master left many things to me when she disappeared. There was the sword, an old key, and a good amount of junk she probably just didn't want to take with her. I gave you the sword back then, because I didn't want our friendship to end. Wait, when did this happen exactly? Hmm. After the duel between Mr. Callus and myself. Uh... Uh... Before that, Clorand would have meals with us and even stay over at the Spina some days. She was on great terms with Papa as well. After the duel, though, there was a period of time where we simply didn't know how to face each other. She entrusted the sword to me, and never came back. <laughs> we were both sad, and conflicted, and totally overthinking everything as a result. <laughs> Whenever I looked at this sword, I couldn't help but wonder... If Miss Petronia had never introduced us to each other at that picnic, maybe part of the sadness I was feeling could have been avoided. Back then, it felt like I hadn't just lost a father, but a close friend as well. No one can change the past. The most important thing is that you two found your way back to each other and can enjoy things like this together. Yep, you're right. I'm... Sorry, you two. I didn't mean to bring up any sad memories. <laughs> Think nothing of it. No one here is at fault. Uh. Huh? Looks like the next part of our script is here. <sighs> Perfect timing. The situation was really starting to get desperate. And not just because of the prison thing. From Clarence's face, I really can't tell if it's good news or bad news. Hmm. Water continues to drip from the ceiling. In this lightless dungeon, you lack a reliable way to tell how much time has passed. Eventually, you get used to the unpleasant odor of straw, mold, and rust, and find yourselves alternating between fits of drowsiness and despair. Suddenly, you hear footsteps outside the door. Heads up, everyone. Someone's coming. Gather close, everyone, and keep your voice down. Who are you? I work as a guard in these dungeons, but my true identity is the same as your own. I'm also a Mar Chose hunter. Huh? Shh. I've already sent away the other guards, but if we make too much noise... I understand, but 
how can we be sure we can trust you? The king has issued a formal decree. In light of the irrefutable proof of your crime, you're to be executed before tomorrow's sunrise. If you want to escape, it has to be now. Uh, executed? We barely did anything! Monsters appearing at the same location as the treasure. Could this entire thing have been a trap? There will be time for speculation once we're out of here. As for my identity, I have no way to prove that to you just yet. Infiltrating the capital was difficult, and finding a chance to speak with you has taken a lot out of me. I could go on, but I think we can all agree that now is not the time for details. Have you seen our weapons anywhere, sir? Don't worry, I brought them with me. They're just behind the door. Still, these weapons alone won't be enough to defeat the true enemy behind the scenes. His faction is too powerful. The guards are all under his control, and he's even stationed a number of golems in various rooms throughout the palace. To defeat him, you must find a secret vault. It is said that within that vault, the Mara Shose hunters of the past left behind a treasure with the power to defeat the sorcerer. You're not coming with us? No. I'll remain in the dungeons to deal with the guards. I'll try my best to distract them so they don't go after you. As long as my identity is not revealed, I'll be able to aid you when the final battle comes. In that case, please stay safe. Thank you for your concern. I will do my utmost. As for the location of the vault, here. This map should lead you there. Got it. All right. Once I open the door, remember to stick close and refrain from making any noise. I'll lead you out of here as quickly as possible. You now have the chance to restore the honor and legacy of the Mara Shosei Hunters. So please, get out there and reclaim what's ours. And... Be sure to exercise caution. With the help of the guard, you successfully escape the dungeons. Your sense of despair and anxiety both seem to fade as you continue your quest. Wait, we didn't get to use our skills at all while we were in prison. Who knows when we're going to get the chance to use that cool summon spell? That is a pity, but we can only continue to move forward. be the place marked on the map. This bit of rock certainly looks suspicious. Well, I'd say an investigation's in order then. Plus, if all else fails, we can just blow it up. Wow, you really meant that! Before you lies a serene stretch of open water, its surface shimmering a brilliant shade of sapphire blue. Well, guess this means it's time for a swim! What's the matter? Uh, it's nothing. <clears throat> As you step into the cave, 
you find yourself in an eerily quiet space. Before you lies a narrow passageway that appears to trail off endlessly into the distance. Blocking our way in. Mm, huh. It almost looks like it's been here for quite some time. I've got to hand it to the tabletop troop. They really went all out with the props. Hmm. Huh. What have we got down here? A kind of mechanism connected to the door? Huh. It looks like we might have to arrange it into a certain pattern. A pattern on a stone door? That's something Master mentioned before. Uh, uh is something wrong, Clarant? After a long, difficult journey, you finally arrive at the location indicated by your map. It appears to be an ancient site of some sort, where treasure likely awaits. Your surroundings are exceedingly quiet and serene, as if the secret that slumbers here has never once been disturbed. If you listen closely, you can almost convince yourself you can hear the sound of its calm, gentle breathing. Uh, that description makes Paimon feel kind of bad for disturbing this place. We're doing this for the sake of the people, to free them from the evil sorcerer. I say it's time for this treasure to once again see the light of day. Lenny's right. We need to keep going. The future of the kingdom depends on it. The next part of the story requires us to solve the puzzle, right? Let's start exploring the area. Yes, that should be fine. Hmm. Something feels off about all this. Guess I'll just have to improvise. Something here, too. Same here. just appeared. Some kind of new mechanism, maybe? By solving the puzzles, you prove yourselves worthy of inheriting the secrets of the past. At the end of each puzzle, you're rewarded with... With? A key. Oh, it must be the key to the big door. <laughs> This is one of the Marashose Hunter Keys that are passed down from generation to generation. It looks just like the one Master passed down to me. It is said that four keys in total are required to form the final, complete key. 
And it seems like we just collected three of them. That must mean... <gasps> huh? What's wrong? You hear a few strange noises. Suddenly, all the torches in the ruin go out at once. Huh? What's going on? Did we fall into another trap? For the sake of immersion, please close your eyes, everyone. <clears throat> Without the torches, the space is now completely dark, and you cannot see anything. But Paimon can still see a little bit over here! Oh, right, sorry. Suddenly, you hear the sound of footsteps pierce through the darkness. <gasps> There's someone else here! <sighs> oh, this is so unsettling! I can't see anything! <laughs> I've been discovered then. Wait, that voice, it's... You recognize the voice as belonging to the guard who led you to this place. It appears he now covets the treasure for himself, and has come to stake his claim. Oh, so this is just part of the script. <sighs> then I can probably relax. Well, if we can't see anything, that means we can't fight to the fullest of our abilities. Should we retreat for now? Judging by the way he's holding his sword, he must be a real Mara Chose hunter. But this isn't part of the script. Retreat? <laughs> That's not the hunter way. If it's dark for us, then it's dark for him. We choose to fight. Your choice is noted. Please keep your eyes closed until I tell you the torches have been relit. This battle will be in the dark. You got it. Well then, let us begin. <laughs> I'd like to try to hit him with my sword. Your strike is successful. Ha! You're facing a veteran Marsh. Is he still standing? Goodness, he sure has a lot of HP. Is it over? Can we open our eyes now? The enemy is strong and relentless, but the battle is nearing its end. The torches have not been relit. What about now? Final strike! Huh. Oh, well, did we get him? Warm fire flickers across the walls once more. Your vision is now clear. In an impressive display of courage, the four of you successfully defeat the uninvited guest. That look in his eyes. It's like he became an entirely different person as soon as I defeated him. Huh? Mr. Florian? Oh, wait. We're supposed to be role-playing. I should stay in character. Ah, uh, ahem. Speak your name, guard. Why did you lead us here just to betray us? Is this treasure really more important to you than bringing peace to the kingdom? <laughs> what kingdom? What peace? Those were nothing but lies. I, Florian, am a true Mara Chose hunter, descended from hunters of ages past. So, he's also using his real name. Or, wait, was that the name of his character from the very beginning? Then I'm even more confused. If you truly are a Mara Chose hunter, shouldn't you want to help us just like you said before? Shouldn't we fight together for the sake of the people? What do you know? In this day and age, there's no glory to be had as a Mara Chose hunter. What's that supposed to mean? 
My skills were passed down to me by my father. We lived a life of obscurity in the remote wilderness. Still, he devoted everything he had to being a Marashose hunter. And what did he get in return? A life of poverty and pain, and a world that forgot all about him. When he died, not a single person came to mourn his passing. The Marashose hunters were the ones who saved this city, were heroes. We deserved more recognition and respect than this. Is he talking about how no one in the capital seems to remember the hunters and their legacy? I didn't expect the script to contain this level of social criticism. So that's why you want to take the treasure for yourself? You feel like you're owed fame and wealth? If you already knew where the treasure was located, why didn't you just come down here and take it? Because I still needed the final key. <clears throat> Only a true Marashose hunter is capable of passing through this final door. As someone who sought to hurt others for his own gain, Florian lost that right long ago. Okay, but what is this treasure anyway? We've got all the keys, right? So can we just go in and take a look? You're sure you want to go in? We've been talking about it for so long, of course we want to see what's inside! And we've already defeated Florian, right? So he won't try to take it from us anymore. Pesky brats. Watch yourself. Then let's open the door together. All right. <clears throat> Your choice of action is confirmed. Before you, the door to the treasure, sealed and undisturbed for more than a hundred years, finally swings open. You hear the shrill wail of the door hinge as it rotates for the first time after years of disuse, almost like a sleeping giant letting out an extended yawn. You get the impression that the secrets buried behind this door might be just as heavy as the sound you just heard. <gasps> it's open! Come on, let's go in! Mama wants to see what's inside! Ooh, me too! Ooh, uncovering hidden treasure is the most exciting part of adventuring. What do we have here? Uh-huh. A stone tablet? And some shabby weapons? Uh. Maybe the troop ran out of budget at the end? They provided a super immersive experience at the beginning only to drop the ball at the most important part? They could have at least filled this place with cardboard mora or something! Wait, I get it now. Paimon, this is the real Mara Shose Hunter treasure! Huh? This is it? The Mara Shose Hunter treasure is just... A stone slab and some broken swords? I can't believe it. I refuse to believe it! Whoa, are you okay? <laughs> the Mara Shose hunter before you appears to suffer a serious mental breakdown. He needs to leave the room for a moment to collect himself. One of you seems to understand the significance of the treasure already. If the rest of you wish to follow suit, you may remain here in the meantime and explore your surroundings. So, how are you doing? Feeling any better? I... What just happened? 
Do you remember how you got here? Or what happened to your body just now? Uh, I remember now. I brought you here because I wanted to... Huh, the explosives in the cave! You mean these? Huh? How did you... I could tell something was off the moment I stepped into this cave, so I kept an eye out. I've already dismantled the whole thing. <laughs> so the strongest champion duelist in all of Fontaine saved the day once again. Guess I shouldn't be surprised. It would seem your skills as a Mara Chose hunter are as sharp as ever. I deserve some answers, don't you think? Tell me why you wanted to lure me here. Everything you said earlier sounded like the truth. Luckily, your monologue was dramatic enough to convince my friends you were just role-playing. I... I don't know. I just always felt like there was something in my heart that didn't belong to me. Something agitated and angry. T who knows, maybe it was my own anger all along. I could never really tell. The feelings about my father and the other Marshose hunters are real. It just wasn't fair. I was angry, bitter that no one remembered them or praised their accomplishments. I don't know when it started, but at some point, my anger came to completely consume me. At that point, I remembered the legend my father used to tell me, the one about the treasure. But if the treasure was all you cared about, why plant all those explosives? Wouldn't they just destroy the treasure and bury you along with it? Uh, I can't remember. My head is a mess. It felt like there was this voice telling me to eliminate the hunters, but now it's gone. From your description, I suspect you were dealing with a devorator. A uh, devorator? Oh, your master... Uh, <clears throat> Your father, I mean. Never talked about it? It was a kind of monster that was active several centuries ago. No, I've heard of it. I'm just not sure why you suddenly... Wait, it can't be. The seal! The seal? My family has served as Mara Chose hunters for many generations. But the title and swordsmanship weren't the only things passed down over our line. There was a seal as well. My father instructed me to always watch over that seal and maintain it regularly. He said it had been passed down over a truly ancient age, and protecting it was our clan's most important duty. But I neglected that duty after he died. I finally decided to come down and check on it one day, and that's where my memories become fuzzy. The Devorator would be a formidable adversary for any mortal being, even ones as capable as the Hunters. If you lacked the power to completely destroy it, you could easily fall prey to its influence and corruption. In light of this, some Marashose hunters chose to seal the Devorator away, in the hopes that a permanent solution would come with the passage of time. I heard it has the power to amplify the obsessions and desires in people's hearts, to the point where they overtake you entirely. It would seem I'm not just lacking in skill with a blade but in mental fortitude as well. And yet, you were able to retrieve three of the four keys. If I remember correctly, each was entrusted to a respected and capable hunter. How did you manage it? One of them belonged to my father. The second I stole from a different hunter. And the third... <sighs> was one that I snatched while the person was on the way home from the tavern. I nearly died in that alley. <sighs> I know just how strong you are. It's as clear as day to everyone in Fontaine. I observed you from dusk to dawn, but could never find any opportunity to sneak up on you. I never even saw you drink a single glass of liquor. The only way I could think to obtain that last key was to lure you here using your hobby, and then... Oh, I get it now. That monster, it wanted to bury you here alongside the treasure. Mm, I won't comment on anything else, but the script was good. <laughs> well, I did pour my heart and soul into it. The stories my father used to tell me, 
about the glory of the heroic Mara Shosei hunters and how they came to be forgotten. It's more than just a story. Huh? You're proud to be a hunter. You're still holding onto that part of yourself, no matter how small. <sighs> I have done so many despicable things. I have nothing to be proud of. Then explain the purpose of the evil sorcerer in your story. <gasps> Isn't he the true antagonist? The one who sought nothing but his own gain, and used the people as pawns to attain it? In your heart of hearts, he was the one you truly wanted to defeat. But... but I've already tainted my sword. I no longer have any right to... Wake up, Florian. Remember how you introduced yourself earlier. Do you really think the Hunters acted out of a desire for honor and glory? Or to be loved and acknowledged by the people? What did your father teach you about our order? Hmm. You do not wield your sword for yourself, but to protect those you serve. There's nothing special about a blade. It's the intentions of the wielder that matter above all else. Do you still not understand? Even after seeing the treasure for yourself? The contents of that room, they represent the true legacy the hunters left behind. You're right. I... I am a Mara Shosei hunter. It's time for me to redeem, no, to finally serve the people I vowed to protect all along. I wouldn't be so quick to push aside the need for redemption. I know. That's a charge I won't bother to defend myself against. Good. Then, come with me. And help me see the script through to the end. Huh? See the script through to the end? But... but there's no more script left. Hmm. Never finished it, huh? No, I mean... I wrote the script with the sole purpose of luring you all here. There was no reason to write beyond this point. Then we'll just have to keep writing it. The evil sorcerer still needs to be defeated. You mean the Devorator? Uh, are you saying I have to make up the rest of the script as we go along? Is that really so hard? You've already written most of it. Surely you can write an ending where the hunters win and justice prevails. I'll be there to help you, too. You aren't afraid your party will fall into danger? I know what my friends are capable of, and they're all quite skilled. Besides, I need their help. Then, are you going to tell them the truth about all this? Ah, uh, I don't intend to spoil the fun. Sometimes, protecting dreams and fantasies is more important than exposing the truth. Don't you think? They're back! That took a while. Uh -um. Oh, uh -huh. Ahem! My fellow Mara Shosei hunters, please forgive me, for I have sinned. Tone it down. S sorry <clears throat> After crossing swords with you and witnessing your courage in battle, I've rediscovered my true self and regained my pride as a Mara Shosei hunter! Oh, do I smell a redemption arc? I confess, I was brainwashed by the evil sorcerer. He asked me to lure you here so he could bury you in this cave. That little... Wait, you're saying all of that wasn't you but the evil sorcerer? That's right. He's adept at manipulating the hearts and minds of the people. I fell under his influence because I did not possess a strong enough sense of will. Huh. And how are you going to prove that you're a changed man? We're not going to fall for the same trap twice! Um... 
To be perfectly honest, I only came to my senses after seeing the treasure. It reminded me of my father's past teachings. The treasure was actually... The names of all the Mar Shosei hunters from ages past and their weapons? Wait, you already know? Of course. Don't underestimate a veteran role player's exploration skills. Oh, wait, I mean, Mara Shosei Hunter Navia's exploration skills. <laughs> we just finished reading through the content of the stone tablet. That tablet recorded the lives of some fascinating people. For example, this Mara Shosei Hunter called Est. She inherited the responsibilities of the Golden Hunter and passed judgment on many people. But in private, she had a very easygoing personality. Her favorite pastime was singing and dancing with her friends, and she was said to have a beautiful voice. So, she was just like you. Oh, you really think so? Well, when you put it that way, I suppose I also have a few things in common with this Walter. Working as an executioner, he supposedly used a countless number of tricks to confound his enemies in battle. Oh, if only I could have seen the feats of magic he pulled off back then. Their lives were all so exciting. You could write so many cool books about their accomplishments. How could they have all been forgotten? Because they chose to be. To hunt monsters that only appear in the shadows, you must also operate in the dark. To be a Mara Shosei hunter is to willingly give up on wealth and fame. And this stone tablet must have been left behind by their companions. That's right. Few Marashose hunters ever revealed their identity to the public. They always protected the city from the shadows. The only time they spoke of their accomplishments would be at night, when they gathered with their fellow hunters in front of the bonfire to share stories of the monsters slain by their hand. So... This tablet was created not so that the hunters would be remembered by the people, but so that they would be remembered by each other. No wonder this place was so well hidden. You regard the stone tablet in solemn silence. The names of your comrades etched onto its surface serve as a reminder that you are never truly alone. The tablet proves that... Although a hunter walks a shrouded path, it is not a solitary one. There will always be those who walk beside you, a fact that remains as true today as in ages long past. Their legacies shall continue to be passed down from generation to generation, as everlasting as the stone onto which their names are carved. Father. You once told me that I should seek out the treasure if I ever became lost. So this is what you wanted me to find. Thank you, my friend. You are very kind. I implore you, everyone. Please give me a chance to make up for all I've done. Allow me to fight alongside you, and defeat the evil sorcerer that threatens the peace and prosperity of everyone in this kingdom. Well, I say we let you join. Sounds good to me too. Everyone makes mistakes. What matters is what you do to make up for them. I have no objections, but... Mr. Florian, do you even know how to defeat the evil sorcerer? Hmm... When he took over my mind, I gained some insight into his thoughts. Every time I thought of the treasure, he reacted with a strong sense of fear. Huh? He's... afraid of the treasure? But there's nothing here except some broken weapons in the stone tablet! What if... the secret's hidden inside these weapons? A GM! Permission to investigate! At first glance, the weapons appear absolutely ordinary. But as you observe them, you notice a faint energy emanating from within. These blades have slain countless monsters. 
Though it's been a long time since they were used in battle, their edges remain sharp, as if they're simply waiting for the next worthy hunter to carry on their legacy. So basically take these with us, right? I'll take this weapon, since it used to belong to Est. Maybe it'll find comfort in being held by someone who appreciates the arts. Ah, oh, good idea. I'll take Mr. Walter's bow then, from one archer magician to another. Hmm. Paimon's gonna pick a cool weapon too! As you grip your weapons, you can almost feel the will of past hunters coursing through your being. It's a feeling of courage, determination, a silent vow passed down from generation to generation that says, eradicate the monsters, no matter the cost. Mr. Florian, do you know where to find the evil sorcerer? I was able to see his surroundings when our minds were connected. I believe he's currently hiding out at the church in the kingdom. We must be extremely careful. He's spent so long living among monsters that he's now taken the form of one. He will not be easily defeated. Then why don't we explore some more and try to find some higher level gear? We don't want to just fight him and lose, right? Oh, um... No, we have to strike now. He was greatly weakened when I managed to break out of his control. If we let him rest, he might have time to escape. I agree with Mr. Florian. We've got to act while we have the advantage. Don't forget, the people of the capital are counting on us. Yeah, now that we've got a plan, there's no point in waiting. The longer this drags on, the worse it will be for everybody. Yes, yes, that's what's called... Yes, that's exactly right. All right, you've persuaded Paimon. Mr. Florian, please lead the way. Of course. Follow me. He had to set up so many scenes today, and now he has to join in for this last part. I really don't envy his job. <laughs> Finally, you decide to slay the evil sorcerer and bring peace back to the kingdom once and for all. As you walk away, you feel the gaze of the stone tablet at your back, as if all the hunters of the past are wishing you success in the battle ahead and awaiting your triumphant return. Finally, you arrive at the church Florian described. As you approach, an ominous aura surrounds you. You get the sense that your enemy is close at hand. How strange. This uneasy feeling seems so real. How did they manage that? Now, it is time for the final battle. Let's go! Florian, wait. What's wrong? I think you should wait outside. You've already been corrupted by the Devorator once. It could easily re-enter your mind and take control of your body. I don't think it's a good idea for you to be this close. If it corrupts you again, it's possible you might take on a new form entirely. That's exactly why I have to go. Why I should be at the very front. You mean... 
Yes. I intend to lure it into my body. That's too risky. If things get out of hand, I might have to kill you. Do you understand how dangerous this is? I understand, but if I do this, you'll have a clear and visible target. The Devorator will have a hard time passing up a chance to enter a body it knows how to control. You won't have to worry about any of your friends being taken over. <laughs> You're not like me, Miss Clorand. You're a just and powerful Marashose hunter. The monster broke free due to my error. It's only right that I shoulder the responsibility for its destruction. This is... something that I have to do. Consider it a duel to restore my honor. My only request is that you give it your all. I understand. Then, as a champion duelist, I hereby accept your request for a duel, and extend to you my most sincere regards. Thank you. The battle is now upon us. Let the Devorator once again tremble under the blade of the Mara Chaussee Hunters. is not invincible. You hold the treasure. The power to defeat it in your own two hands. The treasure? You mean... The names! It's the Marashose Hunter's names! How are we supposed to... You forget, Paimon? There's still one skill we saved until the very end. Hunters fight not for fame, but to aid the people whenever they are summoned. Walter the Marashose Hunter. Master of a thousand tricks. Executioner of the Phantom Hunters! I call for aid! <sighs> Est, the Marshal Say Hunter, inheritor of Cassiodor's will, judge of the Shadow Hunters! Answer my call! Petronia, protector of justice and order, the hunter I respect the most. Thank you for saving my friend, the best one I'll ever know. Please, lend us your strength! <sighs> we have come to answer your summons. And so, the monsters were eradicated, and the sorcerer was defeated. Peace soon returned to the capital. Those in the court, manipulated by the sorcerer, also recognized the errors of their ways. Some remembered the names of the heroes who saved their kingdom. 
but others simply continued their lives none the wiser. Such is the story of the Marachose hunters. They pursue the phantoms in the darkness and exterminate all who pose a threat. They will always protect the city and those within it, even should all memory of their accomplishments be forgotten by the very people they serve. <sighs> I am assuming we've finally reached the end of the script. Yes, you've reached one of the better endings. It's a pretty solid story overall. I thought it was just an ordinary adventure at first, but the further we got into it, the more impressed I became with the production and the plot. That final battle especially! All the effects were super realistic. All oh, right, yeah. Totally. Ah, <laughs> huh. oh, <laughs> that's a really good point. I never expected the weapons we picked up from that vault would have that kind of effect. Yeah, mine nearly scared the daylights out of me when it started glowing. I took a good look at it after we got out, but I don't think it ever lit up again. Oh, we should probably give these props back, right? I'll just leave mine here. Did you have a good time? Of course. Let me know if another script like this comes around. <laughs> sure, no problem. Then I'll head back for now. I think I need some time to fully digest everything that just happened. Once Mr. Florian is awake, please pass on my regards to him. He must be extremely exhausted to have passed out cold like that. You're right. He's had a lot to deal with. Well, see you all some other time. Toodaloo! Okay, so... Uh, can I ask now? I think it should be fine, yeah. What in the world was going on back there? Uh, uh so you saw through all of that? <laughs> that time in the cave when you told us to close our eyes? It'd be weirder if we didn't notice anything. I was dying of curiosity the entire time. I mean, you did a pretty bang-up job of pretending nothing had gone wrong. Farina actually looked like she thought all of it was planned. Guess none of us wanted to be the one to break the illusion. I... Uh, what are you all talking about? Oh, wait. Don't tell me you never... Ugh, this is all my fault. It's not too late to cover your ears. Here, partner. I'll do it for you. A bit late for that, don't you think? Uh, you're saying everything that happened back there wasn't actually part of the script? It's probably more accurate to say this was never a real scripted story to begin with. What? So loud. My head. Hey, you! Get up right now and explain yourself! No shaking, please! Oh, my head. Did, did Paimon just hear that right? You guys made up that whole last part on the spot? It's not nice to lie to people, but Paimon's got to admit that was a really good story, Florian. Oh, and nice improvisation, Florian! Yeah, it was like watching a magician improvise a spectacular magic trick after forgetting an important prop. If Paimon knew something was wrong with that vault, she would have floated straight in the opposite direction. Everything was under control. As if you've ever described a situation as being out of control. <laughs> I'm pretty sure any situation you consider to be easy to handle would scare a reasonable person half to death. Guess I'm just used to it. Uh, you must run into a lot of unexpected situations then. That explains why you're so good at coming up with things on the spot. As for you, Florian... I know there's no excuse for what I did. I'll turn myself into the guards at once, confess my crimes, and accept any punishment that comes my way. 
I would say you've already suffered more than enough. Uh, what? You may have been blinded by fame and fortune in the beginning, but your actions during the final battle had proven you to be a true Marashose hunter. <sighs> You'll be far more used to the city above ground than below. Your job as a hunter is more important. But... Of course, you'll still need to take the keys and pay a personal visit to the two hunters you wronged. Prepare to accept any terms they give you as well. Uh, yes, of course. As far as I'm concerned, though, your showing in the duel was enough to prove your honor. <sighs> then I'll do exactly as you said. I... I'll go return those two keys right now. Thank you so much, everyone. I'll do my best to prove myself worthy of the second chance you've given me. I swear this on my name and honor as a Mara Shose hunter. Until we meet again, everyone. Speaking of Mara Shose hunters, what should we do about the treasure in that cave? Leave it be. Are you sure? We could show it to people, make it so that the hunters are remembered. Don't you want that? No. Every name on that tablet made the same choice. All hunters know what the path entails. I am no exception. My identity as a Mara Shose hunter is not something I need people to remember. I wish only to be recognized as a champion duelist. Nothing more. That's certainly very different from the path of a magician. Still, I admire your decision. Wait! Clement just remembered something. If there were no special effects involved, why did our weapons begin to glow during the battle? That's because the Mara Shosei hunters of ages past would often imbue their weapons with special enchantments to suppress the monsters. Whenever a monster was nearby, their weapons would start to glow. Oh, so that's why they had an effect on that guy near the end. I really thought the summons were doing all the work. Well, I'm sure the summons were a part of it too. Oh? How so? This particular devorator probably hailed from the same era as the hunters we saw in the room. The names you recited all belonged to the bravest hunters, Countless monsters fell to their blades. That's likely why the Devorator visibly reacted when you said them out loud. So the names held the power all along! Uh... Navia... Everything you said during your summon... Huh? Oh! <laughs> uh, I... <laughs> um... I meant what I said. I mean... It was true to my character, so, yeah, I'm glad you heard it. Just don't make me repeat myself. <laughs> it's embarrassing. I really appreciated those words. <laughs> all right, all right. Don't get all sentimental on me. Uh, anyway, let's not talk about that anymore. I'm going to go on ahead. Don't fall too far behind now. She ran off! I should probably head back as well. This story was truly incredible. I might have to spend the whole night telling my siblings all about it. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. <laughs> Traveler. Traveler. Should your name and deeds be forgotten, what do you think the significance of your journey will be? I suppose the significance would be the journey itself and the world we helped create. There's still value in the time I shared with everyone here, in the things we were able to accomplish, even if no one remembers them. A great answer. I'll remember it. Me? <laughs> the Mara Shosei Hunter says nothing in response to that question. 
Perhaps her answer lies in her silence. An unspoken vow left to echo through the night. The path she walks needs no explanation. <laughs>